Can you hear me? Hello? Good morning to everybody in the chat. Can I get a five by five? Please, thank you. No, maybe. I see OPB. What's up, OPB? Good morning. Can you hear me? Can I get a five by five? Thank you, Joe Jupiter. Coffee slurpage. It is coffee time with Bear, which is what we do on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, when I have time to do them on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we did not have the opportunity to do a brief yesterday here on YouTube, although the written brief did go out on Patreon because yesterday was an incredibly full day for me. And somewhere around four o'clock in the afternoon, I uh, I was like, you know what? I think it's I think I have the time to do the brief now. And so what's up, Loki? And so I was going to do the brief at as of four o'clock yesterday afternoon. And then I made the mistake of checking my phone and Ryan Hall y'all was live. <sighs> I'm i I'm a big fan of what Ryan Hall does. Good morning. I'm a big fan of what Ryan Hall does, but when you have a 501 C three that does disaster relief, every time Ryan Hall goes live, our blood pressure goes up a little bit. Uh, so, <laughs> Uh, seeing as how the storm, uh, the storm affected area was from like Texas to Kentucky ish, which is all within uh, the response area for Grindstone Ministries. Instead of going live yesterday, I made sure that my truck had everything that it needs in it to go on a Grindstone deployment. And then I started loading heavy equipment on the trailers in the event that we had to deploy. And uh, praise the Father, uh, it looks like the result of what happened yesterday was basically some rather large hail in a bunch of areas and some straight line wind damage in a few areas and maybe a, one small tornado, Bartles, Bartlesville, Oklahoma-ish area that did minor damage. And so I'll, I'll take that 10 out of 10 times. Can we, can we assist in the aftermath of hurricanes and tornadoes? Yes, absolutely. We've done it 41 times. Do I want there to be hurricanes and tornadoes? No, I don't want that stuff to happen at all. Good morning. And so when it does happen, you know, we, we get a little uh, trepidation in our soul. It's time to, you know, load the trucks and go. And so yesterday afternoon, yesterday evening was spent loading the trucks to be able to go and then continuing to watch Ryan Hall and go, okay, we might have a nothing burger here. I think I can go to sleep now. Hey, my wife sent paperwork for you to make a copy of per the thing that has to go to the CPA. So it's over there, uh, but she needs the originals back. Now everybody knows. So there's 548 people know we got to make copies. So um, that's why there was no brief yesterday because the weather was being uncooperative. And that's why we have coffee time with Bear today um, rather than a brief yesterday. Now, next thing I want to address, a bunch of y'all are reaching out to me with uh, through various social media channels um, and maybe email. I haven't checked the email and I haven't been forwarded anything via email about this yet, but about all the other barges that are smashing into bridges and, and our nation is under attack. Yes, our nation is under attack by barges, not necessarily. And so one of the things that I've been uh, that's been forwarded to me at least a hundred times was Bear, did you know that a bridge smash or a barge smashed into a bridge in Oklahoma? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I'm super aware uh, that bridge is not far from our offices. And um, we have we our internal people were tracking on that way before it ever made the news, and the bridge was shut down. By the time I had told pertinent people in our area that the bridge was shut down and to reroute, it was open again. <sighs> so, yes, a barge smashed into a piling um, on the Arkansas River in Oklahoma, and it did minor superficial damage to the piling because some of the other articles that I've been sent have been about the other barge that smashed into the bridge on the Arkansas River and collapsed the roadway. 
That happened May 26th, 2002. It, yeah, it's a trend. <laughs> we had this data point from 22 years ago, and then we have the Baltimore Bridge. And so because that bark, and it did collapse the roadway when that happened May 26th, 2002, um, all of the bridges along the Arkansas River, the government actually did something good. And uh, I know I, I, it's incredible, but they actually did something good. And they increased the structural capacity of all of those bridges along the river so that the next time a barge smashes into a bridge, it's a nothing burger, which is precisely what happened in Oklahoma uh, a few days ago. It And there was like there was a dude on a boat who was shooting video of the bridge smashing into the pile or the barge smashing into the piling of the bridge. And the barge is pretty effed up. The bridge is fine. It's fine. Um, and I'm very familiar with that area. It, it would be near impossible to get up to speed there because there's actually a dam with a lock in the dam to allow barges to raise and lower. And the bridge is 200 yards from the dam. Like in order to get up speed, you're either going up upstream, up river, going towards the dam where in order to gain speed, in order to do that, would be very, very difficult because that water's always flowing through there. Or you're going downstream from the lock in the dam and you have 200 yards maybe to pick up speed. So anyway, it's not a thing. And in Arkansas, where that bridge collapsed, that happened May 26, 2002. So um, I'm not saying we're not under attack. I'm not saying that barges aren't smashing into bridges in other places of the world because apparently there's been three bridge strikes by commercial vessels in the last six months or so uh, internationally of um, of any level of import including the one that happened in baltimore but as far as a pattern here systematic boats be out of control and smashing into things bro Two of those data points in, in here domestically in the last week were were nothing. One was nothing in Oklahoma, like literally nothing happened. I've seen the pictures of the pilings. The concrete's a little scuffed. That's the extent of the damage. The other happened May 26th, 2002. So not relevant to the conversation. Good morning, Jeremiah Noble. Viking preparedness. Good morning, brother. Shalom, everybody. Andy Barnes. Good morning. So it it, it ain't a thing. Um, could it become a thing? Absolutely. One S two Underground, which is a great channel that y'all should be following, especially if you're if you're into the intel's. He's doing a thing called the Wire Report. Um, not necessarily daily, but usually there's one every forty eight hours or so minimum. They're two to four minute long videos nothing but the facts ma'am and um he's been do he does a great job anyway with all of his content but he's been doing a really good job with that and he brought out that in baltimore there are four um military vessels that were essentially part of the reserve fleet that are now not in play because of what happened in baltimore so he was saying that if there was an asymmetric attack on american infrastructure one of the things that's not being talked about is that there's four, um, I want to say they're, uh, they're like, uh, what do they call those? Roll on, roll off, quick lift uh, transportation ships that they're not, they're not part of the mothball fleet, but they are part of the reserve fleet and um, that the United States Navy has uh, ships like this that are in reserve that are stationed in all these major ports around the country if in case they need to be called into action, they're there. And so those four ships are currently stuck in harbor. Not that they were assigned to do anything interesting anyway, but they are there and they are therefore not in play because the bridge is down. Interesting. Now, was I a nefarious scumbag? I'd be driving ships into bridges all over the place. Like 100%. I would have been like, how many bridges at the same time can we take out with cargo ships? At the same time, that's what I would have done. I'd be like, all right, at 1.26 a.m. on this date, everybody smash your ships into bridges. 
and that's not what happened. Now, could it have been an attack? 100%. There's some weird stuff with the merchant vessel Dali. It has been known to have electrical issues. Reportedly, it had electrical issues when it came into port in Baltimore before it turned around and left again. Um, it has smashed into other things previously, as we reported, uh, when was it? Last Friday? Um, in 2016, I think in Denmark, somewhere, it smashed into something. So it's got a history of electrical issues. It's got a history of smashing into things. But big ships smashing into things is not as uncommon as we would like it to be. I think it's uh, the Tampa Bay Bridge. If you've ever been to Tampa, there's uh, a new beautiful bridge. And then the old bridge is now a fishing pier. And um, I've fished off of that fishing pier when I was doing power construction in the Tampa St. Pete Clearwater area, Weedon Island Game Preserve down in that area. And the reason there's an old bridge and a new bridge is because the old bridge got smashed into by a giant ship. And so this does happen. What's interesting is that El Governmento has decided that uh, they're going to pay for all of it, no questions asked. And a lot of people, there's a lot of conjecture around the reason the government has said that they are going to pay for it is so that there won't be an inquiry on behalf of the insurance companies to find out what exactly happened. And of course, there's two minutes of black box data missing from the MV Dolly, just from it, only the two minutes of where it smashed into the bridge. We've got before that, we've got after that, but we don't have the two minutes of when it smashed into the bridge. Even though the, the voice recorder continued to work, but the data recorder did not. So are there anomalies? 100%. Was it an attack? Very possible. Twas it I who was orchestrating attacks with giant ships? I would have been like, how do we do four dozen of these at the same time? Myself, personally. What do you think, Mr. Analyst? Uh, Come near the microphone and speak speak from the diaphragm. Some of my favorite YouTube channels are watching people dock their boats. <laughs> and so when you do that same kind of shenaniganry with something that weighs millions of tons instead of a couple tons, mm -hmm. bigger stuff happens. Yeah. <clears throat> the cover-up stuff is pretty interesting. Like the cover-up-y, like we're not, I don't know, the government taking over so quickly, they need that bridge back up. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to take it over quickly. Mm -hmm. Is it nefarious? The, the, so the insurance companies don't go through discovery and figure out who was hacking into the boat at the same time. And I don't know. It's what is that quote? Never attributes attribute to malice what can be explained by stupidity. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so, oh, the the black box wasn't recording. It had electrical issues. Well, it should have been, the black box should have been wired to the uh, auxiliary emergency power. It should have been. I don't know if any of y'all have ever done any electrical stuff. I have. You ever open a panel and go, what the hell is this? Who wired this? I can imagine that that also happens on ships. Also, that thing had electrical problems in 2016. Yeah. Who repaired that? Yeah. What wires crossed? What's... Yeah. That, I literally, was, I was uh, rucking couple days ago and i was actually listening to uh i believe it was pastor joe fox viking preparedness uh was doing a um a commentary on this and uh, talking about that and my thought was literally um the wires got crossed the black box should have been wired both to primary power and auxiliary slash emergency power and it wasn't okay dude that I, i've seen people wire their air conditioners wrong outlets 15 amp receptacles wrong lights wrong and so it could literally and i'm not this is not apologetics for the mv dolly i don't i don't care i have no no dog in this race um comma it could have just literally been the wires were supposed to go on this terminal and this terminal and they only went to this terminal as simple as that i mean if you want to mess that shipping area up you don't have to take that bridge out mm because I used to live there. Um, there was a shipping, there was a, uh, another, it was a car hauler, like a, a massive car ship. Yep. And it drifted off with the pi with the harbor pilot in it. Mm -hmm. He drifted off course and got stuck for two months. <laughs> it took two months to release that thing. And 
then like all you have to do, oh, just two of those, make them stuck. The channel is not wide. Yep. Like just okay, make it stuck. You, you, it's the same problem. Yep. You can you can accomplish the same thing, and like the uh, what is it the 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 words not coming to me the canal. Uh -huh. There's a canal that goes between the Chesapeake and the Delaware. Um, that's two ships wide too. Mm -hmm. So two ships. Two ships, you're done. Yep. All, of, all of Baltimore port operations is done. And that's what I'm saying. If if this was an attack, and I was the guy orchestrating the attack, and you and me are homies, we'd be like, hey, I got this crazy idea. Yeah. We're going to get some giant ships, and we're going to do uh, hood rat shit with giant ships. Be like, okay, cool. Where? I'm like, Baltimore. You're like, Baltimore? I'm like, yeah, Baltimore. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Baltimore. Why Baltimore? Because I said so. Okay. Are we are anywhere else? What about Houston? What about the entire West Coast? They're like, no, no, no. Just just Baltimore. Okay. What about New Jersey? Right? They're like, no, just Baltimore. We're just taking out Baltimore. Cool. How many ships are we using? The five, ten? Like, what's the plan? One. Okay. What are we doing? We're gonna blow it up? No. We're gonna drive it into the bridge piling. What? We're not even driving it. The pilot's driving it. I know. Right? It's like at some level, like the evil geniusness of this plot starts to fall off. And like, and, and so where's the corroborating data? Is were 19 other ships smashing into things at the same time? No. Again, I'm not saying it wasn't an attack. If anything, it could have been cyber in nature. So that's my that's the my best guess alternate theory, other than drum pilot bad electric whatever mm -hmm. is there's something going on in the big political sphere in the back end and quietly things are happening and quietly one of our adversaries said well yeah watch this uh -huh. and then like you know u.s says call your bluff no, i don't care dude do what you do and then all of a sudden a ship takes out a bridge mm -hmm. there could be there's no way we will ever know <laughs> yeah. Well, and some of the people are saying in the chat, you know, test run proof of concept. Yeah, that's in, it's entirely possible. Um, it's entirely possible. Is it probable? Maybe. But here's here's where I go with this stuff. And you guys, you should be prepared. You should know where this conversation is going to. Does the merchant vessel Dolly smashing into a bridge affect your daily life? Yeah, yeah, in, in like tertiary follow-on effects, yes. Um, your neighbors affect your life more than it does. The quality of sleep you got last night affects your life more than it does. By the way, uh, in six days, the sky's going to go dark in the middle of the day, which it does occasionally, and people are going to freak out because they do, and we're going to talk about that next. Um Oki says, if it was nefarious, it feels like a cyber attack of the FAF overriety or state actor making a point. Yeah, th that's what Mr. Analyst is saying. But in six days, the sky is going to go dark in the afternoon, which it doesn't usually do. And people are going to freak out because that's what they do. And birds and mammals are all going to act weird because that's what they do during an eclipse. And my question to you is, do you have enough food? in your house to stay home for a week. If you, if you live in the path of the, uh, apoc eclipse, cause I don't know if you've seen all the news on the internet, the world is ending in six days. It's going to be terrible. Nuclear scientists are on the Southern Oklahoma border. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> CERN opened a lab in Oklahoma city. It's okay. So the world's ending in six days. Do you have enough food to stay home for a week? Do you have enough water? Do you have toilet paper? Do you know where you're going to poop if slash when the balloon goes up? And everybody hates that that particular question because, ew, it's messy. Dude, you do it every day. At least you should be doing it every day, right? It's a thing. People poop. They actually wrote a book about it. It's called Everybody Poops. You can get it on Amazon, I'm sure. Okay? Where are you going to go potty at? What do you do with that afterwards? Because flies, fingers, feces, that's how disease is transmitted you don't want disease. Can you stay home for a week? Like this is a great talk about proof of concept pressure testing. This is a great little pressure test for, Oh no, the sky went dark for three hours when it's not supposed to people acted stupid.
can I stay home for a week? Now, for context, when COVID-19 first hit and nobody knew if it was actually the bubonic plague or not, like we didn't know, we, we didn't realize, oh, it's the flu, right? Anyway, I digress. We stayed home. We stayed home, closed the gate, stayed home, didn't go anywhere other than me going to work because I refuse to let the government tell me what I can and cannot do. Uh, we stayed home for four months, four months, four. Now, for for us, the biggest challenge with that is we love our people. Like, I want to hang out with my homies. I want to go fellowship. Hey, let's get together and read the word. Dude, you want to eat this sheep with me? Come on over. I got to butcher a bull. Let's cut firewood. Like, that was the hardest part of it was the, the quarantine aspect. Uh, but we stayed home for, for four months. You know what we did? We ate bread. We ate bread that we made. We ate sheep that we raised. We taught our kids stuff. Like, we stayed home for four months. And that's not a prepper flex. It's a fact. We did it. Go back and watch that content from when COVID-19 first hit. It exists. We documented this. Can you stay home for a week? Like one week. Don't get in the car and go to the store for a week. Because most of us, we're like, I'm, I'm a prepper, man. I'm prepping for the end of the world. It's like, cool. What's your plan? I don't know. I'm going to figure it out whenever the shit hits the fan, bro. It's like, that's a terrible plan. I'm going to figure it out. It's like, hey, man, we're going to go to war. Cool. What's your strategy? I don't know. We'll figure it out when we get there. Yeah, I got bullets and a quart of water. I'm going to be fine. I'm like, mm, eh, I don't know. I don't think so. You know, that that was not my job. Going to war was not my job. But uh, I've observed enough about that to know even as a moron from the outside looking in, going to war without a plan, probably a bad idea. Like going to SHTF without a plan, probably a bad idea. So the eclipse, which is to be perfectly clear, per all of the nonsense on the internet, is going to end the world in six days. We're going to have one week from today, we're going to have a different world that we live in, y'all. Okay. Uh, by the way, I'm like up to here with Eclipse nonsense. Talk to me about Pesach. Where are you doing the Passover? That's what I want to know. If you should put, if you should put more planning into where am I eating the Pesach? And do I have enough flour for unleavened bread? Then you should put into what's happening on this Eclipse. My my opinion personally. Okay, but what's up Dana Sun Tzu in the chat ah yeah exactly ah so you should put more thought into where am I eating the Pesach than what am I doing for the eclipse because the eclipse should be a nothing burger because it's three hours long three it's a three hour tour bro three hours long so let's just take that and extrapolate that a whole bunch make it a week follow on effects from this or a week long can you just can you not go to Walmart for one week? It's like a perfect test for preparedness. That's a long lunch break. Exactly. Ex precisely. It's three hours long. Is, are there, is there potential for shenaniganry due to the eclipse? 100%. Actuality? You know how you avoid all that? Stay in your house. Like Stay in your house. Make. Here's a challenge for you. Make pancakes from scratch. Start with wheat berries and end with pancakes. That is your eclipse homework. Okay. That that's there you go. Now, now let's take that external stimulus and turn it into something productive. Can you feed your people? Simple as that. Make pancakes. <laughs> we do that every week. <laughs> exactly the 12 C. Like, uh, I don't go a lot of places other than to hang out with my homies. That's about it. Like, I really don't go a lot of places. So CERN, Center for European Research Nuclear, or wh whatever that acronym stands for, is firing up their large um, Hadron Collider on the 8th during the eclipse. And that has a lot of people all spun up because clearly the CERN logo, even though they say it represents Particles going around the Hadron Collider, it's clearly the number 666. And this is a bunch of scientists in Europe who are nefarious tied into the World Economic Forum and the Council on 300 and blah, 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 blah. And 
they, this is the rumor, they are going to fire up the Large Hadron Collider on the 8th, produce a singularity that is going to create a black hole that is going to slowly start eating the planet from the inside out and or, because I've also heard this, and or create an alternate dimension. Now, I don't know if you guys know this. There's one creator, and he's not a dude. Even a dude with a 27-mile-long tube buried beneath the ground. Okay? We are created. We're not the creator. The best we can hope to do is possibly discover little tiny facets, slivers of how the creator operates with our human brains. Because Deuteronomy 29, 29, the secret matters belong to Elohim. And the reason, per CERN, per their website, now, they could say whatever they want at their website, but the stated reason for why they are doing this is they are looking for evidence, uh, further evidence of the Higgs boson particle, which is called the God particle, which is basically inexplicable. They know that there's something in the universe that they cannot currently quantify that somehow led to the creation of all this stuff. So are the Ninevites spinning up their giant tube underneath the ground during a sign in conjunction with an appointed time? 100%. Are they going to find the God particle? Bro, it's in this book. Here's the guy. It's right here. This is the Higgs boson. Okay. It actually starts right here. Genesis chapter one is where you will find the Higgs boson. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Boom. I found it. It's already there. I'll save everybody the taxpayer money. What do you got, Mr. Analyst? Uh, so it's, it's happening on the eclipse day. Well, it's, it's happening in Switzerland. <laughs> so, 12 hours ahead. Are you saying there's a right? the difference here? There's a difference in time. Okay. Also, it's the first Monday after a giant pagan holiday. Mm. Because when they do this experiment, there's going to be like after effects of data. People are going to be swamped with work. We might as well do it after the major holiday. There you go. So it's the, it's the first Monday after the first... After the first equinox in the uh, no now <laughs> now is there is there nefarious bullshit with this? Yeah, why? Because CERN is also tied in with NASA, and NASA was literally founded by Nazis, right? Werner von Braun, do a study on Werner von Braun. Like he made the V two rockets that bombarded uh, Britain from Germany, hundred percent. And then after the war, Americans were like, that guy's really smart. And it's interesting how that worked out. The uh, Those rocket scientists, literal rocket scientists, were like, we could get captured by the Russians, who are pretty brutal, or we could get captured by the Americans. They have coffee. Let's go get captured by the Americans. So they got captured by the Americans, and then we were like, Dude, these Nazi bros are super smart. We should they they were able to make a rocket that launched now. That's because they had input from alien entities, the de Glocka, the Bell. Aren't you familiar with the Bell Bear? Yeah, I've dude, I've I watch the Y Files too. Okay. Where everybody's familiar with Di Glocka. Here's my point. They willingly came to the United States. We looked at all their data, their telemetry, all these things. We're like, these guys are smart. Hey man, can you put a rocket on the moon? And they're like, Yeah, of course we put a rocket on the moon. And so go to Huntsville, Alabama, everything, because NASA's headquartered there, everything. Werner Von Braun Library, Von Braun Street, Von Braun School, everything, all named after f former Nazis who were occultists who timed their stuff, their experiments, to the moon, the sun, and the stars. Now the Father tells us the moon, the sun, and the stars are for signs and appointed times. They're not for worshiping, just so we're all on the same page here. We don't worship them. They're for signs and appointed times. What are the appointed times? Leviticus 23. Read it. But NASA, absolutely, filled with a bunch of jerks. Oh, by the way, when they were like, we can't actually get a rocket to the moon. They were like, yo, Stanley Kubrick, we understand you're working on a movie about putting people on the moon. Any chance you could play that movie live on TV for us real quick? And he's like, sounds great. And then you get the moon landing. Uh, but and have you noticed NASA air quote lost all the data that they used to get to the moon? They're saying that they cannot get back to the moon now. I mean, can you plug your computer from 1995 and anything on this desk? <laughs> Maybe <laughs> that, that's a good point. And all the people who are involved have died. So, but but this is this is the 
These are little, ro- literally, rocket scientists. This is literally what they do. This is their job. And it's like, it's the nearest thing in the sky. It's right there. It's just 268,000 miles away, so they say. It's it's right there. 268,000 miles. Some of us have vehicles that have more miles on them than that. Right? Like, you could drive your Toyota 4Runner to the moon and back <laughs> if there was a road that went that far. And they're like, oh, sorry, we just can't get there anymore. And then, of course, you get into that's because on the far side of the moon, there's a giant alien base. And when we went up there the first time, the American astronauts met face to face with the aliens and the aliens said, bro, this is our land. You guys got to go or we will smoke check your asses. And that's why we haven't been back to the moon. Maybe possible. Yes. So so CERN, all of this is the this is the work of Hasatan. It absolutely is the work of Hasatan because look at how much time humans are devoting to spinning not in scripture. Mm, there you go. It doesn't matter what they're doing underground in these stupid tubes. It doesn't matter what's happening with the eclipse. It does matter that <clears throat> this is the adversary at work. Like yep. This is people not talking to God. This is people not reading his word. This uh-huh. is people not doing the things he said to do. Yeah, they're, they, that's a great point. They went. They are literally going through all this Dig me a hole in the ground 27 miles long, make it a circle so I can smash beams of particles together at just shy of light speed so that I might be able to find the Higgs boson, a.k.a. God particle. It's the first line in the Bible. The first line, not even the first chapter. Like, all you got to do is open it and read it and go, ah, there it is. Found it. And the 10th order effect is there's a guy in a basement in in Kansas Mm -hmm. that's like the world's going to end because that machine's going to turn on instead of opening up Leviticus and reading it. Yep, 100%. You know what I mean? So, yes, this is the adversary. This absolutely is the devil. It all is because no one is talking about Yah on this. Well, let's take it a step further. Of course the world's going to (laughs) end. Did you read the end of the book? Like this world deserves everything it gets. The world deserves judgment. The world has fallen. It's ruled by the accuser, the adversary, Ha Satan, for a time until Messiah returns. Is like, I've had enough of your shit, lake of fire for you. Of course the world's going to end. And and so you got to take it like if you're a believer, if your God is God, not a false god not a a set of ideals not ideology or iconography or i was just gonna say or an engraved image but if your god is god the creator of the universe and his word will not return to him void which is not just what he said but his word made flesh who was the first fruits of the resurrection who will not return to him void or empty as the rest of us bro the second resurrection, I'm sorry, the first resurrection. The second resurrection is for everybody who's going the other direction. I got a video on that. It's Revelation chapter 21, 20 and 21. Go check that out. Here's my point. If your God is God, why are you afraid that the world's going to end? Because he told us it was going to end. They, there's something to be said, and uh, we don't necessarily need to jump into this rabbit hole, but we'll, we'll at least peek in it. There's something to be said that uh, it's called the Genesis Gap Theory. And it's this concept that, um, and Timothy Alberino in the book Birthright touches on this and makes a lot of hay out of it. But there's something to be said that the first verse is, in the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Verse two, and the earth came to be formless and empty and darkness was on the face of the deep and the spirit of Elohim was moving on the face of the waters. And the earth came to be formless and empty now a lot of people suppose that there is a gap of time possibly immeasurably long shalom tommy guptill good morning um between genesis 1 1 and genesis 1 2 and what's interesting is in genesis 1 this uh formless and empty is the same exact words Tohu and Bohu that's used elsewhere in the Bible. Jeremiah, Isaiah, for example, used later in Genesis with the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, where Tohu and Bohu is uh, transcribed as utterly destroyed, utterly destroyed. 
And so it's possible that the earth at one time prior to this, where this story picks up in Genesis, was utterly destroyed. And then the Father put it back together again. Now you go all the way forward, all the other end of the book, Revelation 21, second to last chapter in the book, there's a new heaven and a new earth that is made. By the way, this whole concept of we're going to go to heaven, you're a people. People are made for earth. When you die, you go to sleep biblically. And then at the end of an age, you wake up and every man, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, and all will be judged. The great day of the Lord. And then Messiah says, behold, I come swiftly to reward each man according to his works. Shaul talks about this. Some will be resurrected to everlasting life. Some will be resurrected to everlasting damnation. And so this, this concept of, well, grandpa's in heaven now. Grandpa's asleep. We'll see grandpa at the end of an age. Uh, well, what happens to the soul? I don't know. Rest in peace was actually pretty accurate. Yeah, rest in peace. <laughs> well, think about it. Uh, Shaul, the first king of uh, Israel, King Saul, goes to the witch at Endor and calls up Samuel, the prophet Samuel. And Samuel is pissed. What are you doing? First of all, you, a king of Israel, know that you're not supposed to be tracking with witches. You're not supposed to be doing any divination. And you have woken me from my slumber, is what he tells him. He's like, what do you want? He's like, I need to know if I should go to war. He's like, by this time tomorrow, you'll be dead. Oh, <laughs> well, I probably shouldn't have woken this guy up. But the point is, he woke him up. So, and that that's the Bible tells us not to do that stuff. It doesn't say that it's not possible. In fact, biblically, it is possible to call on spirits and talk to the disembodied spirits of the dead. Like there, there's biblical proof text for that. It says don't do it. It says that the people of Elohim don't do that. Do not participate in that. Going back to like the the gap theory, CERN, all of this stuff, the eclipse. Yep. Does it change who your Elohim is? It shouldn't. Does it change who your Messiah is? Yep. Like my little brother used to say, what matters? Yep. <laughs> yep. What matters? It doesn't. Nothing. Like Whatever. Yep. 100%. I agree with that. Um, it shouldn't affect if your if your God is God, if your Yah is Yah. These are just, for me, super interesting data points. But it doesn't change my relationship with him by the blood of his son the least bit. If anything, it fascinates me as to, like I said, look at all these, these men and women in their starched white lab coats, literally buried beneath the ground, trying to find a single particle to prove the existence of the creator. Bro, read the book. I will send you one for free. I save you a whole bunch of time and money, man. <clears throat> like it's it's literally in the first line. And so CERN, to recap, CERN is spinning up their large hadron collider on the eighth, which a lot of people are making hay out of because it's also the date of the eclipse here in the United States of America, 12 hours behind them. Could they open a singularity and destroy the Earth? I guess technically, mathematically, that's possible. Does that track with anything the Father has told us previously? Zero percent. So am I afraid of it? Zero percent afraid of it. If this is the end, then like tribulation was super Dude, overhyped. How many times have I said that? John owes me an explanation. If this is if we are living the book of Revelation right now, John was I mean, now John was also the guy, though. He's like and then the two apostles ran and John got there first. Right. Like he had to just get that little dig in on Peter, you know, so he, he, he you know, there's a little panache to the way John writes. But um, but I mean, if we're talking about the book of Revelation, the cross references in Revelation to Daniel and to Amos and to Joel and to Isaiah and to Jeremiah and to Ezekiel, especially Ezekiel, the cross references what John Yochanan is experiencing in the book of Revelation is like um, a conglomeration, like a big stew of all these other visions that these previous men of Elohim have had smashed together to provide more context to John. 
because in Daniel 11, Gabriel tells Daniel, seal up this book of prophecy for it's not time yet. But then in Revelation chapter 1, John is told, open the book for the time is near. Okay. And so John is having an amalgamation of all these different visions of the men of Elohim who have come before him, trying to understand what he's seeing, because I would submit to you a lot of what he's seeing takes place in our day or future from our day. And the, like the most impressive piece of technology in John's time was the chariot, right? And he's like, dude, there's these giant locust things with like armored plates and stingers in their tails. It's like, sounds like an A-864 Apache or a drone or whatever comes next. I have no idea. But if this is revelation, John owes everybody a big apology. I don't think it is. And a lot of people have asked me like, well, how will we know when it is? Bro, you won't need to ask. How will I know if I'm in tribulation? Uh, really? And the, the flip side of that is that Americans have become so soft in my lifetime that when Congress decides that it might take TikTok away, <laughs> that that seems like a facet of revelation. It's like, really? <laughs> really? Do you have food? Do you have people? Do you have shelter? Do you have clean water to drink? Is anybody trying to cut your head off because of your testimony of Messiah? Right? Like if nobody's trying to cut your head off with a dull machete right now, which is happening in other places of the world right now, uh, bro, you're not in tribulation. This is not tribulation. We're so, and this is the thing, because we spend too much time worrying about the large Hadron Collider we, and we don't spend enough time in thankfulness to the Father for the fact that we even woke up today. We're so distracted, and therefore we think we're so oppressed that all, something that's happening literally on the other side of the world could be the end of the world for us. It's like the Father let you wake up today. He gave you people who love you to steward. He's given you a purpose in life. He's redeemed you by the blood of his Son. These same people are the ones we read about going through the wilderness complaining they have no water yeah you know it's the, it's the yep. same heart condition it's the same thing over did you bring us out here to die <laughs> yeah. it's like there's the clouds literally on the mountain that father he's he guys he's right here right and then moshe is like hey guys i'm gonna go up the mountain and i'm gonna talk with the creator and then he goes up the mountain and they go over to aaron they're like yo aaron listen uh we don't know what has become of this man moshe we were wondering could you make us like a Canaanite bull calf for us to worship? And Aaron's like, yeah, sure thing. And so he does. And he, and then Moshe comes off the mountain. He gets so pissed when he sees this Canaanite bull that he throws the tablets on the ground. Moshe had a little bit of an anger management issue, which so he and I relate to one another. I like, I, I have a lot of empathy and sympathy for Moshe. Um, throws the tablets on the ground and you could just in your, New Living Bear translation, what the f is this? You know, he's just pissed. And Aaron's like, hey, man, I threw some gold on the fire and this calf came out. Now, notice that Aaron never gets smoked for this. His sons, Nadav and Avihu, they get smoked for bringing the wrong incense to the tabernacle. But Aaron, the high priest, doesn't get smoked for making a golden calf. Why? My supposition? Sifting. Let's see who's here because they really want to be here and who's just along for the ride. So while Moshe is up on the mountain face to face with the creator receiving the Torah, the instructions for the preservation of life, his literal brother Aaron is down here putting together a false flag op. So he makes the golden calf to see who will bow down to it. Now we know everybody who's just along for the ride, sifting and separating and then Moshe says to the Levites, Levites, put your sword upon your thigh, go throughout the camp, north to south, east to west, slay every man his brother who has bent the knee to Baal. And 3,000 men are killed that day. That's why I think Aaron was allowed to make the golden calf, and the father never smoked him for it. White Robert Smalls, you have no idea however far your story, which honestly led me to start my walk with Christ. Thank you for sharing the way you do. Praise the father. White Robert Smalls. Bless you, bro. Tactically Torah, good morning. 
A fourth of the Earth's population will die in the fourth seal. Hard for the world to not notice that. Yeshua in the clouds of the sixth seal is pretty noticeable. 100%, bro. Yeah. Yeah. The rain the rain is still falling from the sky. Like, we, uh, we, we get so wrapped up in the bombardment of the news, air quote news, external stimulus that we receive every day. We miss the fact that, like, the Father loves us. He created us for a purpose. He redeemed us by the blood of his Son. And it is well with us. It is well with us. Praise Yah. Life is actually really good. And even if, even if you are not in a great place right now, like a little bit of perspective, is there food in your belly? Did you, you have some type of device that you can receive this transmission on, whether it's a cell phone, a TV, a tablet, like somehow a laptop, somehow you're listening to my voice right now. Do you have food in your belly? Is there a roof, even if it's a subpar roof, over your head? Are you warm and dry, relatively? Do you have people who love you? Bro. And then you add, like, purpose to your life. Are you doing meaningful work for the benefit of others? What else is there? What else could you possibly want from the creator of the universe? I need more money in my bank account. Why? To do what? What are you going to do with it? To serve you or to serve Elohim? It's impossible to serve mammon and Elohim at the same time. What, what else do you need? I need a better car. For what? To go where? For why? You need. I need, I need, I need. No. You gotta. You have to properly divide, rightly divide needs and wants. My old man used to tell me all the time when I was growing up in my formative years, take a piece of paper, fold it in half height-wise, so you've got two columns left and right. And at the top of the uh, left column, you write need. And uh, at the top of the right column, you write want. And you write down everything you need first. Food, water, shelter, work, right? You need these things. And then you write down everything you want. They said, now with your money, you never do anything in the want column until everything is checked off in the need column, ever. And that stuck with me. And it's become a, a exercise and perspective for me is like, I have everything I need and and most of what I want. And if I had everything that I wanted and everything I needed, I'd probably be a tyrant, honestly. And there's a there's a proverb for that. Imagine that. Book of Proverbs. You guys should be doing the Proverbs challenge, by the way. Today's the second of the month, which means you read Proverbs 2. I believe it's Proverbs 26. Let's see. Do, 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 do. No, maybe it's later than that. Maybe it's Proverbs 30. Yeah. Here it is. Proverbs 30. The words of Agor, son of Yekka, a message. Um, and then verse 7. Well, I'll start at 5. Every word of Elohim is tried. He is a shield to those taking refuge in him. Do not add to his words, lest he reprove you and you be found a liar. Two matters I have asked of you. Deny them not to me before I die. Remove falsehood and a lying word far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me my lawful bread, lest I become satisfied and deny you. And say, who is Yahuwah? And lest I be poor and steal and seize the name of my Elohim. Dude, give us this day our daily bread. You have everything you need and most of what you want. What are we so spun up about? I was going to talk to you guys about the FBI and se Section 702. Uh, I don't want to. Suffice it to say that uh, Section 702 has been abused by the FBI 278,000 times. That's been recorded thus far. The analyst is on the other side of the camera shaking his head. Um <laughs> um, yeah uh 
Take note, FISA 702 has been used for warrantless surveillance of U.S. citizens hundreds of thousands of times, yet the FBI demands 702 be reauthorized by 19 April without a warrant requirement for searches of U.S. citizens. That's a quote from Senator Mike Lee, Republican of Utah. That's all I really want to say about that because I do have to pee. If you have any interesting thoughts on that, say them to this side of the microphone. Not that you're allowed to speak on. Well, you tell them a proverb or something while I pee. I'll be right back. I don't. Whatever. Say words. What'd you say, Mark? Yeah. Yeah, I don't have anything for them. You didn't say words to him? I didn't. You didn't? You didn't tell him about this cool t-shirt right here? This one? The Caleb House t-shirt? Link in description? Didn't tell him about that one? Oh, well. Did we throw the tall ones on the store too? I don't know. I'll have to talk to the guy who runs that. Um, don't ask me tactical questions. I don't know. Bear, when are you guys going to? I have no idea. I don't know. Um. Let's see. Patreon link is in the description. Uh, we talk about stuff on Patreon. It's ten bucks a month. It's the best ten bucks you can spend on the internet. Check it out. And if you hate it, you're out ten bucks. I don't think you're going to hate it. There's uh, we do th Monday, Wednesday, Friday pre-recorded video there. That's exclusive content that you'll never see on YouTube. As well as uh, we do a live Q and A Thursday evenings. That's usually about two hours, sometimes three. Uh, so that's 16 pieces of content minimum per month that you're getting uh, at Patreon, as well as the written brief that posts Monday, Wednesday, Friday as well. So it's a uh, it's a high value option for you. It's 10 bucks a month. Check it out. Let's see what else. Um, Refuge Medical right now. If you spend uh, 199 dollars or more, I believe it is you're automatically entered to win a $10,000 value night vision giveaway, dual tube, Gen 3, white phosphor nods, hardhead veterans helmet, a mount, um, yeah, ten over $10,000 in value, orders of $199 or more, get you automatically entered. There's also the FJB promo going on right now. You, now, this you might not be familiar with what FJB is, when is our next Ask Your Questions post? Texas Sheep Lady, what's up? The Give Me Your Questions post should be pinned to the top. Uh, I know it is on mobile. I don't know if it is on desktop, but it should be pinned to the top on uh, Patreon. So that's the other thing on Patreon. You ask me the questions, I give you the answers. That's where the pre-recorded content comes from. So it's a, a lot higher value, in my opinion, which it should be because you're paying for it. It's not free here on YouTube. Refuge, um, $199 bucks or more, nods. And then uh, the FJB promo. I don't know if you guys know what FJB stands for. Fling Jelly Beans. There you go, Shop Stuff. Warrior Messiah, two bucks. Thank you. Um, FJB, any of our plastic kits, because let's be honest, this administration we have right now is plastic at best, right? Like if we're, if the, Daniel was having his like, and then I saw a man standing there with a head of gold and arms and shoulders of silver and a, and a belly of bronze and legs of, of iron. And what movie was it back in the 90s where the old ladies were getting injected with formaldehyde to stay alive? Like we're trying to say young. <laughs> I no idea. I just, I just imagine there's like a whole jar of formaldehyde keeping that man mobile. Bro, from, like from rotting. I don't think that's a man. <laughs> that's, I just honestly don't think. And I don't mean like in. Bro, does he, yeah, he does have feet of clay mixed with iron. Um, well, I mean, we could get into the symbolism of that. Luckily, I already have. I have a Daniel Eleven video. You should go watch that. I get. By the way, I get a lot of um, 
a lot of uh, people reaching out like, Bear, what do you think about XYZ Bible verse? Put in the YouTube search bar, Bear Independent, and then whatever that chapter is, Leviticus 23, uh, mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, whatever. Chances are I've already done a video on it because I've been reading the entire Bible on camera for five years now, I believe that it is. We've done every word of the New Testament, and in the Old Testament, we've made it from Genesis through uh, Daniel at this point, and right now we're posting uh, the Arming the Saints men's retreat content, and then we'll be picking up in Hosea. So my goal is to read every word of the Bible on camera. So I probably have a video on it. Um, speaking of flinging jelly beans, the FJB, uh, anything that's made of plastic, um, so our bleeding prevention kits, our buckets, all of that, if you buy those things, you get either a refuge medical hat or you get a refuge medical tote bag. All that stuff is in the uh, is on the website at refugemedical.com. And of course, your promo code is Bear Nation for free shipping as well. And you can use promo codes in conjunction with the minimum order of $199 for the knots. So if you're on Patreon, you can use your promo code. If you're on Viking Preparedness, you can use your promo code. Where Whatever codes you have, you can use that for a percentage off. I actually like it. So FJB, we know what that stands for. Yeah. But we're also commanded to like pray for our rulers, right? Yeah. So this guy's uh, Mark Chase, fix Joe Biden. Yeah, I saw that. I like it. Yeah. Define fix. Just fix him. <laughs> it's okay. Whatever that is, but like, hey. Find, be find, fix, finish. Is that, is that what we're talking about here? <laughs> fix, Joe fix Joe Biden. <laughs> Tracking. Um, so uh, let's see. Grindstoneministries.com. Who that? Oh, hey, it's that guy. If you need one of these and you don't have one of these, you can go to grindstoneministries.com. I'm for those who are on audio or who are driving, uh, not looking at the screen. This is the scriptures, and it's a uh, it's the Bible, bro. It's a new translation from the original source text, the Septuagint and the Masoretic texts. So it's not a translation of a translation of a translation. It's a new translation from the original source texts. I like it a lot. Uh, I have 14 different versions of the Bible, and this is my EDC version, the scriptures. And so if you need one, you can go to grindstoneministries.com, and you can purchase them at our cost. Or you can contact us through the website, and I will send you one for free. Now, I actually won't send you one for free because I won't be the one who does it, but somebody on my team will send you one for free. So being perfectly honest, the likelihood that it has my fingerprints on it is incredibly low, but one will show up. Still a high chance of beard hair. Yes, very high chance of beard hair in your package, but it won't be any of mine. Bro, there are some people out there that are like, I got one of Bear's beard hairs. Put it on eBay for like three thousand dollars. Little test tube with my. Little do you know, I'm the one that's buying it all. <laughs> are you? Yeah, I'm knitting a bear. Out of you, bear. you are the bear independent insider threat. Thanks, Bob. It's, I would. It's, no, I'm, I'm acquiring it all from the outside, and I'm bringing it back into your. Okay, right. okay. You're. It's a defensive strategy. Yeah, that's right. Because like it's weird, but if you needed one of my beard hairs, I would give you one. Thanks, okay. You wouldn't have to eBay it. Although I'd be. I would be very interested as to why you need one of my beard hairs. I'll give it to you, but I have questions. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yep, we do. No, White Fox, we are not doing the Bear Independent Body Pillows. That is not happening. because Because one of you weirdos out there is going to do unrighteous things with it. That's all I – I just feel that in my bones. We're not doing that. Um, and lastly, but certainly not least, grindstoneministries.com. Uh, there are links in the description down below for, um, uh, I'm sorry, calebhouse.org um, for Caleb House, which is our anti-human trafficking ministry, and uh, our brother Rex's t-shirt, our brother Saul's t-shirt from Sanctified Supply Co. that go to help uh, help the mission, help the effort. If the Spirit convicts you and you want to be a part of what we're doing with Caleb House, you can find us at www.calebwithakhouse.org. If the spirit does not convict you, that's okay. That doesn't make you a scumbag. It doesn't make you trash. It just, the father probably needs you working on something else 
And there are lots of other ministries out there that need the support. Um, at the Stepford Wives. What's up, Bama? Anyway, so Stepford Wives or Caleb House, you pick. Um, but if you're not convicted to support what we're doing, that's fine too. Um, I don't, I'm not here to shill and ask you for money. It's the Spirit's job to convict, it's my job to talk. And so I'm just talking about it. Um, bear bobblehead. You know, Jack, we looked into getting some bobbleheads when uh Twitch was still with refuge training, and they're incredibly expensive. Yeah, they really are. And $18. and that's not me talking out of turn. It was Twitch's idea. Yeah. He was like, We should get Twitch bobbleheads because you know his name was Twitch because he twitches, and we we're like, We should get Twitch bobbleheads, and we priced them. And I'm so you found some at 18? Yeah, because I would have been in at 18. The ones I found were 54 bucks a piece. I mean, they were like Oh, they were, okay. Came back not looking like right. Well, and and with Alibaba, they were eighteen bucks a piece for a minimum order of ten thousand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> worth of Twitch bobbleheads. Every refuge medical order gets a free Twitch, Twitch bobble. Bobbleheads. People are like, "Who the hell is this guy?" Um. Anyway, so that's what we got going on today. I have a day full of meetings, uh, but they're all good meetings. So. Let's go ahead and talk to the father real quick, and then let's uh, be about our business, shall we? Ote, here we go. Good morning, Father Yah. Father, thank you for uh, the opportunity to wake up on this side of the dirt today. Father, thank you for being sovereign over all things, including whatever shenanigans are happening locally, nationally, and internationally right now. Father, keep us focused on you and the things that matter and Shield us from the things that are not of you and the things that don't matter. Father, please give us strength and power and authority in the name of your son, Yeshua HaMashiach, today. Pour out your spirit on all flesh for wisdom and discernment that we would know right from wrong and that we would be led in the appropriate direction. And Father, give us peace that surpasses all understanding as we do our best to stand against the wiles of the wicked one. And Father, be there anything within the sound of my voice that is not of you. We come together in agreement and rebuke it in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach and command it to flee. Father, thank you for your miraculous provision and protection and blessing. I pray that you just smile upon us today. And ask these things in Yeshua's name. Amen. That's the show. That's what I got. Thank you for uh, hanging out with me today. I appreciate y'all very much. And uh, like I said, sorry I wasn't live yesterday. Uh, I was alive yesterday, just not on camera. There's a lot of stuff happening yesterday. So I appreciate you guys and girls, and I will see you when I see y'all. Shalom.